Hi, Mr. Watt here, and we're looking at another one of these union and immigrant paragraphs. And we're going to be talking about a critical problem, which is writing in chronological order. Again, as we've discussed in other videos, we would like for each paragraph to start with some sort of an indentation. A quarter of an inch is fine. And we also want to make use of paragraphs. If we do our statistical analysis on this paragraph, we'll see that that's about 71 words, which is a little long, but not impossible. And this second paragraph, which is about um, uh, which is about immigrants is about 49, which is a little short, but again, not a big deal. They're in the right range. Starting in the 1820s, workers and factories started unions. Laborers didn't like the way they were being treated, so they went on strike demanding shorter work days, more pay, and less dangerous jobs. Back then, going on strike was illegal, and the leaders of the strikes would often be thrown in jail or fired. In the end, is a signal that it's really a time to use a date. And there are a couple of dates that we can use in our textbook. The first is that workers won the right to strike in Massachusetts in 1842. unskilled, or sorry, skilled laborers like machinists won higher wages by proving their value to companies. Unskilled laborers had to bargain in groups like unions for higher pay. Employers rarely heard their demands. And our book does not, in fact, give us a statement about when the various uh, um, various unions really began to gain power, but by the 1850s, government workers were promised a 10-hour workday and the right to strike. So our first date is the 1820s, our second date is, the, is 1842, and the third date is the 1850s. And all three of them are in chronological order. They go from the date furthest back in history to a midpoint to an end point. And having that kind of time lock in your writing, going from the first date to the second date to the third date, is a way of showing that progress has been made. In this second paragraph, we only have one date, 1840s, and I'm going to leave it as an exercise to you, the reader, and to you, the viewer, to figure out what you might say. But I will give you a clue that it has to do with the revolutions in Germany and elsewhere in 1848. There's a missing sentence here, and I would also say by 1860, this put pressure on the South to open up its labor markets and end slavery. And by doing that, by having those three dates in there, you're helping to lead up to what we're doing next, the Civil War.